Welcome to the Echo Cast, episode 145. What is next? I am Morgan, aka Bond Diesel, and this is a podcast about gaming of all genres, platforms, and generations from the perspective of a dad nerd with the occasional friend stopping by. Please take a moment to subscribe to and rate the podcast on whatever platform you are listening to it on. If you are on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up, ring the bell, whatever, uh, and drop a comment. Uh, It does help with discoverability. If you're on iTunes, please leave a review. This episode, we will talk about the upcoming EA play and my predictions and hopes for that uh, massive wink, wink leadership change at Ubisoft escape from Tarkov 12.11 patch and maybe wipe the walking dead game review, listener questions, content updates, and lots more. If you would like to support this podcast on Patreon, check out patreon.com slash bond diesel. I want to thank this month's Patreon supporters, Hassan, Christian, Darren, Tim, PK, Man Made Golf, and Lunchbox. If you would like to become one of these supporters, please check out patreon.com slash Bon Diesel. Jumping right into some gaming news. EA Play, we know that is coming on July 22nd. I do plan on co-streaming this. I'm actually a little bit more excited for this event than I would have been uh, pre-Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Uh, The only news that's really coming out about it right now is that there's supposedly going to be an announcement for a returning big-time IP. The main prediction right now is that it's going to be Dead Space. Um, That would be rather interesting because I believe it was at last year's one of the events a game was announced, I believe, made by many of the ex-Dead Space devs that basically just looked like Dead Space. So it will be interesting if this turns into kind of a, uh, a competition between the original devs and their new game and the massive juggernaut that is EA and what they try to do with this Um, As for other things, we'll obviously see all the sports games talked about. Dragon Age 4 uh, is a big possibility, I'm thinking. Um, There has been some uh, potential that there may be an announcement of College Football 2023 returning. Um, If you're not from the States or if you just don't care about college football, um, you wouldn't know that a few years ago, like... I think it's been five or six or seven years. Uh, there was basically a big hubbub about EA making a college football game that didn't technically have the likenesses of real amateur college players, but basically did. And long story short, um, EA lost the rights um, to make these games. If they made them, they would have to just make up a bunch of colleges and no one wants to play that so they they stopped making it um there have been a bunch of changes in recent years um, pertaining to student athletes and um, whether or not they can take licensing deals and and, uh, like sponsorships and things like that Um, and that should technically uh, make uh, the college football game come back again Um, what's worth uh, commenting on that for me is one of my favorite games ever it is college football 2006 um, from ea and it's because it had one of the best soundtracks to any video game ever and what people don't realize about madden and stuff is that these games are basically giant rpgs that just happen to involve football um, and the college game especially was like this even especially the old one So honestly, to me, this is super exciting. I really do hope that we see 
some acknowledgement or a new announcement of college football 2023. And um, the only thing I would like to see more than that is another teaser for Mass Effect 4. Now, my honest opinion is that that is not going to happen. Um, I think that they gave us that teaser last year and that that situation is going to be buttoned down so they can focus on Dragon Age 4. Uh, we know that's coming. Um, I believe we haven't really seen anything about it. My guess is that it's coming in 2022, maybe 2023, which would make this EA Play event basically the, the best place to begin that announcement. So that's my guess. Um, I don't actually expect anything from Mass Effect. The teaser they put out last year has led to lots of speculation about when the next Mass Effect is going to take place, whether or not, you know, what what galaxy it's going to be in. It seems to be hinting that it's returning to the OG trilogy galaxy of the Milky Way, uh, but it may involve Andromeda, which was the failed game that came out after three. Um, if they do another teaser, I suspect that they'll try to kind of button down some of those rumors or at least push people in a more for sure direction, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, other than that, I kind of expect to see a bunch of the expected things. Obviously, this is going to be a big place um, for Battlefield 2042 to be uh, showcased. Can't wait for that. That game looks super fun. I think they have some big strides or some big gaps to make up for with that game to try to get people to spend 70 bucks on a multiplayer only game. I think it's worth it. I think it's going to be worth it. But I'm not everyone and not everyone has the history with that franchise like I do. So I think that's going to be a big one. I think if they're going to announce that it's coming to Game Pass, it will happen at this event. Um, I hope it does. I think that's the best chance for Battlefield 2042 to really get off the ground and start making up some ground. Um, they don't seem to be going for the war zone, uh, you know, audience. It seems like they are trying to go back to that big, large scale multiplayer squad based fighting ob objective based rounds. Um, and I can't wait for that. I'm so sick of BRs. I just can't even, <laughs> I can't even get started. So yeah, EA play event next month. I fully intend on streaming it. So if you, uh, haven't followed me on Twitch already, please check out uh, twitch.tv slash bond diesel and drop me a follow and, uh, hang out when we, uh, get to see what EA has for us. Next news story is about Massive Entertainment, which is a Ubisoft studio. Um, if you're a listener of this podcast, you're probably a listener because of The Division. This is the studio who uh, your head, head uh, is the head of The Division uh, 1 and 2, um, not of Heartland, but that's a story for a different day. And they announced that David Pofelt is leaving. Um, he's out of there. So, um, that's big news. He has been the, the head. So what happened is massive, um, existed before Ubisoft. Uh, it, there's a book called the dream architects by David Polfelt, um, that about the first half of the book talks about what it was like basically to get into the gaming industry, uh, early. And then the second half talks about massive under Ubisoft and talks a lot about avatar. Um, a little bit about the division, um, just a smidge about division two, um, but especially about their old IPs. And it's a really great book. I very, very highly suggest it. Um, what I think is interesting about this is they have not announced the replacement for David yet. Um, what's interesting about that to me is that, um, they, they are probably going to try to bring someone in who's significant. Um, I have to imagine that who replaces David is going to be someone where someone's like, oh, he or she was the head of that studio because 
massive right now i don't believe is working on like a division three or anything i think that's many years away if it ever happens what people need to realize though is that you know ubisoft's biggest ips are probably rainbow six assassin's creed and then it's arguable in my opinion that the next biggest IPs that they are in charge of are Avatar and Star Wars and Star and those are very well could be higher up the list. So people need to realize that if David's leaving, um, who after chatting with some devs, um, I'm under the impression he's a much more significant presence than people would imagine. Um, they are going to have to replace him with someone who can handle the pressure of managing a studio who is working on arguably Ubisoft's two biggest IP opportunities. Um, this, this avatar deal is a big deal. And, and, and because that movie came out years ago and, and many people, you know, have kind of forgotten about it or don't care about this game. That's a huge IP. And especially the fact that this game is supposed to release alongside the sequel um, to the movie. Uh, I, I think, people are underestimating how big of a deal that IP is. Um, and then Star Wars kind of goes without saying, right? It's Star Wars. Of course, it's a big deal. Um, you know, devs and nerds across the world um, would kill for an opportunity to work on that IP. And Massive is working on it as well as Avatar. So this, this, this leaving by David isn't that surprising. He's been there a long time. Um, he's accomplished a lot. Um, I suspect that him moving the studio to Eden to this new studio they're in was kind of his like final hurrah um, and that they're going to have someone else carry them through and, you know, take care of these two new franchises for Massive and Ubisoft. Um, and hopefully whoever they pick will be someone who's willing to you know, put their foot down and say, you know, the division is an IP that is worthy and should get a third game eventually. Um, I certainly hope so. Uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see with all of this stuff that's happening in the division universe for better or worse. Um, it seems like there's someone who's pushing division IP and wants it to continue. Uh, my concern is that it's going to get way overextended. Um, there's rumors of some PVP based game that's going to involve like the outcast and the cleaners, uh, that's in, in the third echelon from Splinter Cell and the wolves from Ghost Recon Breakpoint and it's first person or something. I don't, it sounds like a shit show. And if you want me to be totally honest, it sounds like a nightmare and, um, I'm excited about this like graphic novel or whatever it's going to be for division. I'm excited about this audio book or podcast thing that's happening um, for the new content for the movie. Um, but I am not excited about some of this stuff that's happening with, um, you know, with how little we know about Heartland with this other game that's supposedly coming with the division two content in mode that's supposedly coming, but we still know nothing about. I think Massive's in a weird spot right now and losing their head um, is going to be interesting. Uh, how it works out long run could be good or bad. Sometimes change is a good thing um, there, you know, but that can go both ways. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, the next story is talking about Escape from Tarkov. So uh, that's, it's a game I'm actually a pretty big fan of. Um, my relationship with Tarkov, uh, I think I've played through three wipes now. The, the first wipe um, I barely played. I kind of jumped in a little bit. And um, the second wipe I played a ton, um, but didn't get too far in it. Um, a wipe is where everything in your account gets completely deleted, all of your progress, everything. Uh, the third and the current wipe um, I actually blew through it and did a ton. My goal was to hit level 40, um, into maybe, 
you know, accomplish some goals in that game I hadn't done before. Um, I did hit level 42. I did it in like six weeks uh, and I haven't played since. <laughs> that game, when it hits like in game or meta, whatever it is, um, it gets a little boring, at least in my opinion. You have most of the people all running the same gear or memeing or, you know, cheating and being kind of just, it's just not fun in my opinion, once you accomplish the big goals. Um, and there's not really an end game implemented yet. So it, it's just the game's in a weird spot, um, but we know that there's a patch coming soon. And um, there was a lot of speculation that there wouldn't be a wipe where all of your progress would remain, um, which a lot of people didn't want, including me, because I just have no desire to go back and play that game right now. Um, but there's um, basically they always do big events before a wipe where um, they essentially flood the game with cash and gear uh, because they know it's about to wipe. So they just let people have some goofy fun to go nuts for a week or two that's currently happening so i don't believe there's a actual announcement of a wipe coming for escape from tarkov um, but it's uh, pretty much assuredly uh, imminent or about to happen so um i plan on being into it um i i want to play again um some of the changes that are coming are things like karma like a karma system um things like uh, weapon jamming and degradation that is technically in the game right now, but it never matters. You can run a gun 50 times. Um, you might have to repair it once or twice. And, and, and But that's assuming you make it that many runs with the same gear. You almost will never do that. Um, but the degradation is a big deal because it's also going to apply to gear that you, um, that you collect in the world. So you may pick up an AK-47 that's pristine um, and it works perfectly. Or you may pick one up that's like 50% down on its durability and is has an extremely good chance of misfiring depending on the hotness of the ammo you run. Um, so they, they are starting to get a little deeper into the whole, you know, punishing side of the game. So it's already considered a kick yourself in the nuts uh, simulator. Um, so if, if they're adding more things like that, I'm definitely curious to see. Uh, how it's going to work out for them in the long run. Uh, have a small bit of news here. Um, the Cyberpunk 2077 patch 1.23 has released. Um, it basically has a just a bunch more quality of life updates. Um, this patch did bring the game back to PlayStation Store. Um, it was essentially banned from PlayStation until this. Um, but they, but PlayStation themselves literally comes out and says. You shouldn't play this on the base PlayStation 4. You should be on PS4 Pro or PS5. Um, now, I think that's kind of falls kind of falls on deaf ears because they're still happy to take your money for the PS4 version, but they are also telling you not to buy it. So, um, at least they took it off the market, though. I don't think Xbox ever did, and uh, you know, they did do unlimited refunds that I think just expired. Um, but i don't know that this game the the issue is that cyberpunk to me was really being branded and marketed as a game that was going to revolutionize you know this like first person rpg type of game and instead it just ended up being like a pretty solid story game that in my opinion would have been better off just being made into like a linear story game instead of trying to do this open world thing, which they just didn't accomplish. Um, I don't expect that things like um, a, a bunch of the, the, the depth mechanics, things like, um, you know, the, the, the law enforcement and police systems and, and things like that. I don't ever expect those, those things to ever, uh, meet their potential. Uh, the, the, the world just, it just doesn't seem like they had time to make the world as deep and then as interesting as they kind of made it seem like it was going to be. And, and that's okay. It doesn't have to meet the expectations. Um, but they kind of have to take it on the chin, uh, when they, I mean, they promoted that game to be something it wasn't and that it's probably never going to be, and that's okay. But I certainly hope people, um, uh, are more careful next time. 
Okay. So uh, we, I do have some first impressions. Um, real quick, um, two of them, the Tunic demo. Um, this is on Game Pass. This is kind of like a, a Zelda-ish game, like an old school, old, old school Zelda game. Um, it's adorable. Uh, it has a cute little soundtrack. Um, the combat is actually more fun than I thought it would be. It's more dynamic than I expected, the exploration and things like that. Um, yeah. Uh, I can't remember when the game comes out full. I think it's sometime this year. Um, but check out the demo if you have access to it. Um, it's very cute. Um, I played it for an hour or two. Um, I do have a, a playthrough on my YouTube. If you search for Bond Diesel on YouTube, you can find it should be in 4K 60 FPS. And uh, check it out. Um, it's a cute little game. I'm excited for it to come. Um, I also checked out Scarlet Nexus. That's another game that's coming, I believe, to Game Pass. Um, but I believe it's a multi-platform game. Um, I don't get it. <laughs> I was kind of hoping for like a cool RPG, action RPG type of thing. The controls don't make sense to me. I don't care about the story. Uh, I'm probably going to pass on this one. It seems to have like really high production values. And if you're into the type of game that it is, um, it's, it's probably worth checking out. But it's just not my jam. And that's okay. And that leads me to the the final first impression, um, the Walking Dead game, uh, game one through four. So uh, over the last week and a half or two weeks, I have I finally played this Telltale slash Playground um, series, uh, which is a confusing thing to try to explain, and I'm not going to bother, basically. But... Um, I slept on this game hard. Um, I watched the walking dead show. I never read the comics, but I watched the show for a few seasons and then just kind of stopped caring. And, um, I remember when these games were coming out, uh, the, the fourth one came out just a couple of years ago. And I remember being like, I don't care about the walking dead. Like, why would I play a game? And while there are a couple of these games that are focused on the characters from the show, um, this main story um, isn't. And uh, I believe through all four games, I think Herschel and Jesus are the only two characters from the show that we ever meet. Um, and Herschel is for a very short time in the first game. And Jesus is involved in the third game a decent amount. Um, this game was so good. And I haven't really played this style of game before. Uh, this kind of choose your own adventure book type of game. Um, that does have a little bit of action sprinkled in. Um, especially so in the third and fourth game. Especially the fourth game. Um, they, they definitely, it, it's like almost a third person game at times. Um, the first game focuses on, uh, you play as a man named Lee who, um, was arrested for killing his wife's lover. Um, and he was being taken to jail when the outbreak began in this universe. Um, and he, after some stuff happens, uh, happens upon a young girl who's seven or eight. Um, who, whose parents are not with her and her babysitter um, who's been with her since the outbreak started um, has become uh, infected or a, a walker. Um, and basically the game uh, is Lee acting as Clem or Clementine's parent through the first game. And it's just such a sweet relationship to watch develop um, you know, as a newer father, uh, my, my daughter's going to turn two here in a month plus. And, um, it was just, it was really sweet. And, um, the games, the, the, all four of the games do a really good job of balancing like dread and happiness and sadness and love and all these things. And the first game set up so well through the other three, in my opinion, um, and what I really liked about the second and third and fourth games is that there's a lot of references back to the first game, um, and the choices you make. And there's especially, um, these, they aren't really flashbacks. Uh, some of them are, um, but Clem or Clementine, uh, who you play as in two and four mostly, 
Um, three, you play as another character named Javi, but you interact with Clem a lot. Um, but Clementine, you know, starts the series off being seven or eight years old and ends it, I think, being 14 or 15. And watching her growth um, after the relationship she built with Lee, who Lee ultimately passes away um, by one means or another, uh, after he's taught Clem a lot and uh, shared his experience with her. And that really sticks with her. Um, and there's there's flashbacks and then there's also scenes where you can tell she is basically imagining new interactions with him uh, and they're just such a gut punch and they're so good um, every opportunity through all four games uh, especially two through four where Slim had the opportunity to reference Lee I did it every time because it's always just so sweet and uh, it's just it's a really good story and I would personally argue a much more compelling and interesting story than anything the show has ever presented. Maybe the comics do a better job. Um, I don't know. I haven't read them. Um, but, but I really got attached to Clem and Lee. Uh, and it, and just the way it culminates it, the fourth game ends. Um, and what happened with the fourth game is it, it's made up of, of like four chapters and after the first two chapters were completed, Telltale unfolded. Um, they fired everyone who worked for them. And Rob Kirkman, who's the developer of um, the Walking Dead series, all of the things, as well as things like Invincible and, and some other stuff. Um, he and Playground Games and and, and basically a, uh, and even like Gary Witta, if you're familiar with him, he did Rogue One and he wrote the first uh, game of the Walking Dead game, um, all kind of got together and made sure to finish Clem's story, uh, which they do. And I don't really want to go into spoilers necessarily. Um, the way it ends, there's a character in the the fourth game who I can't stand, um, but you know redeems themselves a bit by the end. Um, but it just came down to I really enjoyed getting shown the world of Clem and of these people and uh what's really exciting for me um is uh that th there's more coming um i still think the first game was my favorite um i enjoyed uh the other three for their own reasons um i really like the fourth one because you see clem as like has all of the experience and is old enough to like really do some damage and be, and be a leader and, and be a, a person. Um, and, uh, but the first one, there's just something so, um, you know, obviously personally impactful to me of watching this man, you know, take over the role as the father to this little girl basically and, and sacrifice everything for her. Um, so she can move on and go on and then we see what that turns into. Uh, so, yeah. So if you haven't played those games, the first three are on game pass. Um, the fourth one, since it, it's fairly new, uh, I think 2019, um, it's like 20 bucks. It's worth it. It's so good. And I knocked this out in like a week and a half. Uh, I played quite a bit at night. I played till pretty late. Um, a little bit during the day, but yeah. Um, I, maybe i'll do a spoiler cast next week or something you know it, it feels so dumb doing spoilers for a game that's been out for years i did it with mass effect as well but i'm sure there are people who are new to it um and there will probably be people coming to it now because they've actually announced um the big thing was that the fourth game uh, this clementine character was supposed to be her like final hurrah like something happens to her at the end of the game and you think it's the worst and then it's not uh, and then that's supposed to be the happy ending. Uh, but what they've announced is that um, there's a comic coming out in a couple of weeks at the beginning of July 2021 where Clem will um, be featured in a comic. It, it seems like she's just going to be like, it's like a quick hit, like one edition thing. Um, but then what's happening next year in 2022 is there's a novel coming out that's supposed to take place after the events of the fourth game. Uh, and maybe a, a good number of years after um, where, where Clem leaves her situation for some reason and um, goes up north to Vermont with um, with a new character. 
Um, so there's been a bunch of uproar in the community because apparently a bunch of the people thought that the Indian F4 was perfect. Um, my argument is that in the world of the walking dead, nothing lasts forever. Um, and if this, if this book is going to take place years later, um, I suspect that there's going to be a reason why there aren't uh, people coming along with her or why they haven't been mentioned yet. And, uh, I don't know, some people are upset and that's fine. Um, but I think that four ended really well, but I want more, I want more from Clem. Um, I, I want more of that voice and that personality. And, uh, I, I really hope this book does it justice. Um, the final bit here is that this, uh, playing through the walking dead and, and, and feeling the story and characters and impact. Um, now all I can think about is how badly I want stay of the K three to be like what it, what stay of the K two is, you know, obviously bumped up graphically and mechanically and stuff. I would really love if there was like a single player mode where you can go through and have interactions like what you get in the walking dead or even in mass effect and that, you know, that they're really big, important things and that it's a very focused and, and exciting story where, you know, state of the K one and two both had like story ish modes. Um, but man, like being able to play a game like state of decay in the world of the walking dead like it's like it's too good to be true um obviously I, I don't expect it to ever mash up together um but man the possibilities so yeah the walking dead game if you never played them and you want a nice fairly chill experience um, to just be told a great story um, definitely play i i very very much enjoyed my time i do have a couple questions um, this week or this episode, uh, the first one from rogue gold on Twitter, what are you more, uh, what are your more uh, comprehensive thoughts on David Pulfeld's departure? Uh, what do you speculate massive's new unannounced project might be, um, division three or another new IP. So, um, when David left, I did some peeking around and it looks like massive has a unannounced project. Um, so from some conversations I've had and some stuff I've seen posted on Twitter, um, I am going to venture that this is some kind of like double a project, um, something very small, um, probably something for new devs to massive to work on, um, that you, you've seen this happen with like, uh, with like the Microsoft studios, uh, obsidian as grounded, which is this game that's being made by like 12 people. And I believe they're all new to the studio. And I think it's, it's almost like an onboarding project where they're, they're using this IP to basically train new people to the way that obsidian works. And I think that's what this thing is going to be for massive. Um, it's not division three. I'm extremely confident that until star Wars and or avatar are done with development, which is going to be years. Um, one of those teams will be mostly turned into division three one day, I hope. Um, but I have it on pretty good authority at this point that there is no division three in development and that, that there won't be manpower available for that for potentially years. So take that for what it's worth. Maybe it's a grain of salt to you, but, uh, I trust me and you should too. Um, overall, I think David's departure, um, I, I think from a stability standpoint, it's, it's a bummer. And, you know, I sense some anxiety from people who work there about it. Um, I just hope they make a good choice in the replacement and it's someone who can really lead them, uh, to the, to be successful with these two IPs and someone who can help them not forget their roots and maybe bring back ground control. Uh, give us a division three, um, you know, to really steward that, that studio really well, because, um, despite divisions issues, I think, especially when you know, some of like the inside baseball, um, you know, or you would know that massive is probably Ubisoft's best studio, um, whether you like division or not, or whether you like the decisions they made or not from a technical standpoint, I would find it. I think that there's a pretty good argument to be made 
So um, I, I hope whoever they choose will be a worthy leader of, uh, of a studio who deserves it. Second question that this episode is from Jern Sum on Twitter. Uh, on the previous episode, I heard you were looking into Microsoft Flight, uh, Flight Simulator. Have you used the Flight Sims before? If so, which ones? If not, why does this particular version pique your interest? Um, thank you for the question, Jern Sum. If you have any questions, please post them down in the YouTube comments or check out my Twitter at Bond Diesel or at the Echo Cast. Um, and ask me on there. I am happy to add your questions to the show. Uh, as for this question from Jernsome, um, I actually played the Microsoft Flight Simulators all the way back to the 90s uh, when they were just pix pixels, basically. Uh, big, giant pixels. Um, the ones I actually played the most of, though, were probably in the early 2000s uh, with Microsoft Combat Flight Simulator, which was... Um, a World War II focused game and you know my memories of it or that it was like photorealistic and amazing I'm sure if I go back and look it's not that impressive but in like the early 2000s there was this time where flight sims um, World War II ones especially were just popping um, and what was really fun about them is that um, I can't remember if it was Microsoft or not but they they had these things where like you would fly over territory and you would obviously dogfight or take down bombers but a big part of it was ground war as well taking out trains taking out convoys taking out tanks um and doing stuff like that even i think there was even some of the games had like infantry and stuff that you could take out um so yeah I, i'm very familiar with the microsoft flight games um, and i'm very excited um obviously the first thing i want to do is try to find my house um but it seems like a chill game that even for like streaming, you could just pull up, set your destination and then just chat, you know, and just enjoy the views. So, um, yeah, I, I'm pretty familiar with a bunch of flight sims, but I would be pained to be able to tell you what some of them were called back in the day, because, um, I, the one thing I know I never played was the, the one about the, the IL to Sturmvik, Stormvik, um, the, the Russian flight sim game. I never played that one, even though I should have. Um, I also remember one of my favorite uh, flight sims actually being, uh, there was a B-17 bomber, World War II game, that was like highly detailed, and you could play as uh, you know, the pilot or the bomber, um, or, or all of them, um, uh, you play as like the door gunner, the ball turret, or the you know the top turret, or the tail gunner, and it was just oh so fun. So, yeah, I'm excited for that game, um, especially the Top Gun DLC they're bringing out, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to check it out and play it, and uh, see how quickly I can stall out and crash. Uh, moving on to some content updates, um, I do just want to thank everyone who listens uh, and checks me out and listens to the podcast and uh, entertains uh, my thoughts, um, especially the ones who ask questions, who are Patreon supporters and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I can be a bit much uh, for better or worse here and there, and uh, the support that's been shown um, by people uh, has been great. And, um, I'm really proud of, I feel like I've always been very true to myself and very honest, uh, sometimes again, for better or worse, uh, you know, I've made friends and lost friends over that type of thing. Um, so far, I don't think I've lost anyone, um, that is a reflection on my character. Uh, but you know, everyone has their own opinion on that. Um, but just, just thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, the final bit here is I do want to, um, I have the stream all ready to go. Um, I do want to stream a fresh Division 2 playthrough. Um, the Ascent comes out next month. I believe Flight Sim does as well. And if this Tarkov wipe is really happening, I definitely want to stream some of that. So, um, yeah, be on the lookout. Uh, it's uh, twitch.tv slash Bon Diesel. That's where I'm going to wrap it up. So, uh, if you would like to support my uh, Extra Life 2021 campaign, please go to extralife.org slash participant slash bond underscore diesel and uh, drop some cash there. I do have some goals for streaming and so on and so forth. Um, I've also been doing some giveaways, some merch giveaways. 
coffee mugs and t-shirts and such. Um, yeah, do that. That'd be really nice. Um, you can check me out on Twitter at Bondiesel or at the Echo Cast. Uh, we do have some cool Echo Cast and Bondiesel merch uh, at streamlabs.com slash Bondiesel. Uh, and that's all I have. So until next time. I'm <laughs> sorry.